Okay, so welcome to the chill Sunday morning slot. I'm taking that very seriously this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am sitting here in my pyjamas. I have just got in from work. I have my tea next to me, by which I mean my food that I'm going to eat, not like a cup of tea. I've got a cup of coffee, an incredibly sweet cup of coffee, in my uh, sexy ladies mug that you saw in the update video. And I've got a bowl of chili and rice. Um, which is not as exciting as it sounds, because I'll be honest with you, the chilli came out of a tin and the rice came out of a packet, so you know. Because <laughs> I can't be fucking bothered to cook today, because it's been that kind of fucking day. And I fancied sitting down with a nice chill game, because this is what I do when I get in from work, especially if it's been a bit stressful. I, just, I sit down with a nice chill game, and I've got a, a list of several chill games, and Banished is one of them. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video of Banished. Because Banished is such a wonderful, chill little game, and it's absolutely perfect for a nice, casual, you know, Sunday morning sort of video. So, Banished is a... I was going to call it a city builder. That kind of makes it sound grander than what it actually is. It's like a medieval village builder, more like, really. But it's very chill. It's very easy. It's very casual. Nothing dramatic happens. There's no, like, barbarians who are going to come and attack us or anything like that. It's literally just build your village you start off with a group of villagers and you build your village and you have to you know manage your resources and stuff like that and make sure there's enough food for the winter and all of that kind of stuff but there's nothing complicated and nothing stressful it's just a really nice pretty chill city builder and i'm just going to move my microphone because it's a little bit in front of my screen i'm going to do that as quietly as i possibly can i mean i could have i could have just done it and edited it out and you would never have known that i had to do it but you know, I've decided, I decided to, to let you in on the magic of editing. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, or recording rather. Uh, yes, so I've got a few mods installed, if you know the game. I'll let you see what mods I've got installed. So I've got a library. That's just like a, an extra building that, you know, you can have a library and a librarian. That's for like really late on in the game when you've got too many people and not enough jobs. That very rarely happens in Banished, but uh, we'll see if we ever get there. Better fields, so my fields bring in more, um, uh, a bigger yield of like whatever it is I've planted. Just to make the already easy game even easier, so you're not like stressing too much over how much, you know, food and stuff that you've got. Because this is, you know, this is not a game that I play to be stressed. There are some games that you play to be stressed, aren't they? You know, and it's a good kind of stress. Banished is not one of them. Banished is a de-stress kind of game. Um, oh, Dairy Milk and Creamery, that's a good one. So, Banished is all about resources. So, like, you, you've you got your forester who chops down trees and that produces wood, and then you've got your woodcutter who cuts that wood into firewood that you'll need to put in your houses, right? So everything, like, goes into something else. Um, you've got, like, your blacksmith who takes wood and iron and turns it into tools, etc. Uh, dairy Milk and Creamery just adds an extra one to that. So you can farm cows, and if you farm cows, they'll give you um, meat and leather and with this one also milk and then you can use that milk um in a creamery to make cheese i think and stuff like that so it's just like extra food and stuff and it just it just adds a little extra layer and <coughs> um, flatten terrain tool just lets you flatten the terrain use with caution um if you've got an annoying bit of terrain that you want to flatten down don't use it very much but uh it's useful now and then uh, increases resources combined yes increases the amount of stone iron and wood produced so that again just makes it a little bit easier really a bit less stressful uh, more climates mod we'll get to that in a minute when we're about to start a new game uh, stone bridge that just adds a stone bridge because uh, when you get more advanced you start off with like everything being wooden and wooden houses and everything but when you get more advanced you can upgrade um, your houses to be wooden houses and you're, you're sort of very quaint uh, to stone houses rather and your very quaint little wooden village becomes a, a sort of you know more advanced stone village but in the base game they still just have wooden bridges you can just see one in the background there um and uh, some lovely person created a stone bridge for us just to make it a bit prettier so this that's just like an aesthetic one tighter roads just means that you can build paths closer to houses and stuff like that so that's another aesthetic one really and tree of life this mod allows all livestock to live in the wild and all types of fruit trees to grow in clusters on the map so we'll, i will explain that one later as we go on so new game we need to name our town what shall we name our town magpyton yes wonderful i think that is inspired um map seed yeah you can just click on that to randomize that if you want create a new seed for map generation that 
They're just numbers, guys. They mean absolutely nothing to me. I'm sure there are some dedicated players who probably write down the numbers every time they start a new game. Just, you know, in case they get a wonderful map that they want to find again, but no. no. A terrain type, valleys or mountains? We'll go valleys. Because then we'll have more, like, flat area to work with, probably. It's more, like, stuff that we can build on. I'm thinking of making this into an actual series rather than... Because, you know me, I can't do one... I can't do one shots. I'm actually incapable. Even my portal um, video was technically a complete one, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I might make this a little series. Um, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought as I'm thinking. Um, yeah, they'll run like a few Sundays because if we go to rain size large, um, it doesn't take that long to fill up a whole map, really. And it's such a lovely game, man. And you get so attached to your little town. So I think we might, we'll probably turn this in. There'll be, there'll be a few parts of this. We'll either go until I've filled the whole map, which will not take very long at all, or until um, I just get bored. Whichever one comes first. Climate, yes. So in the base game, you had, was it mild, fair and harsh? I think you had in the base game. And then the mod, the more climates mod added, perfect Siberian tropical and freezing. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the difference is between, like, Siberian and freezing and harsh. Like, I don't know what the difference is between fair and mild. Or, you know, but we're going to go fair because we don't want it to be too sort of awful. But I would like a bit of snow now and then. Disasters, yes. So, <clears throat> this game's definition of disasters is there might be a fire now and then. That's what that means. Occasionally a house might catch fire. And we are talking like really occasionally, like once in a blue moon. And then if you're really unlucky, some of your crops might catch blight now and then. And you just like lose some of your crops. So that can happen. And, and very, very rarely, and I cannot stress this enough, so rarely there might be a plague. And by plague, what I mean is some villagers might get a tiny bit of a cough, but so long as you've got a few herbs to give them, they'll be fine. And it's very unlikely they're actually going to die. So that's what this game means by disasters. And you can turn them off if you want to. If you really want a proper chill experience, you could not have to deal with the occasional tiny fire that might destroy one or two houses. Um, but we'll leave disasters on, you know, just for the drama. Uh, and starting condition, so this is where the Tree of Life mod comes in. So, in the base game you had easy, medium and hard. Tree of Life brought in Adam and Eve, which means... Because uh, when you start off, you start off with like a handful of villagers. And you've got some adults and some children. Um, the Adam and Eve one means that you start with one man and one woman and that's it. And you have to build your entire village just from that. Um, an incredibly inbred village, obviously. Um, I have done it, it's actually not that difficult, but it makes me feel a bit uneasy knowing that all of these people are very, very closely related to each other, but, you know, try not to think about it. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got, yes, Tree of Life full, Tree of Life animals, Tree of Life trees. So, what that means is... <sighs> right, in the base game, I'm, I'm terrible at explaining stuff, I'm so bad at it, I'm so sorry. In the base game, you can create a hunter's cabin and you can have hunters who go out and hunt animals but in the base game the only animals that are roaming around in the wild are deer so that's the only ones that they can hunt but um there are also cows and sheep but you can only farm them and you have to buy them off a trader to be able to farm them they aren't just wandering around and um, so you can't ever have beef or mutton or lamb until you've bought cows and sheep off a trader and chickens as well chickens is the other one but with the Tree of Life mod, it brings them in as wild, so you can have wild um, cows and sheep and chickens roaming around, and the hunters will hunt them as well. So you get more variety of meat from the hunters, because the more varied your villager's diet is, the better their health is. You need to have a very varied diet, lots of sources of food, otherwise their health will start to drop, and then they're more likely to get ill. Um, although I've never had that happen, because like I say, this game is quite, quite easy. And then the trees one, I think... I can't entirely remember. I think maybe... Oh, I can't remember. I think it's the, there's like berries and stuff that can be gathered and you need to build a gather's hut to gather them. But 
this changes it so that they can just be gathered by I, I can't remember we'll 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 figure it out anyway we're gonna go tree of life full and we're gonna go difficult in medium because um i'm not interested in a stressful experience although to be honest with you this game i, I don't think this game could ever be stressful if it tried uh, anyway oh eroding terrain negotiating with merchants implementing fire safety measures there's those fires i told you about uh calming lakes and rivers that's nice falls nobody do anything jesus christ you hate it when the ai just starts doing stuff without you saying anything yeah there we go there's our wild cows and chickens who are wandering around and our wild deer and, and there's our wild sheep over there so they wouldn't be there without the mod um and god knows what the thing about trees was i honestly have no idea anyway so this is our little starting village we need to get our little uh, thing up there. There we are, Magpiton. And this tells us how many villages we've got. So we've got 18. That's actually quite a big number to start with. Because it's a bit randomised how many you start with. Um, even like within, it's, it's not like one amount for each difficulty level, you know. It, it's a bit randomised within that. So 18 is actually quite a decent amount of people to start with. Um, and this is how much resources we've got. So we've got 120 logs. We've got 60 stone... 40 iron, uh, 1,800 of food, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. We've got 30 clothes. I mean, that's actually jackets, so that's like to wear when it's cold. We'll need them come winter. And 40 tools. And so both of them will keep us going for a while, so we don't need to worry much about a blacksmith or a tailor just yet. But food is going to definitely be our first priority. So uh, if we get up a little, little map. So that is our overview map that's what we've got to work with and that there that is where we are the little yellow one so we are going to fill this entire map people we're going to do it i believe in us <laughs> i think we will be able to to be honest with you um I think the only thing that used to limit me with banished was the fact that my computer couldn't handle it when i started to fill up an entire map but it gets to a point where you start to expand really quickly like, it's, it's a real slog at the beginning where you're kind of struggling for resources and you don't have enough of everything and you don't have enough people. Um, and then all of a sudden you just hit a turning point where it's like you can't expand fast enough. Um, and the map just fills up massively. Right, I've lost my villagers. Where are we? There we are. Um, yeah, so we will fill up this entire map. I promise we will. Right, so these are our villagers. And they all have little houses above their heads because they are currently homeless. So there are 18 citizens without homes. So we need to build some houses first things first and up here it tells us yeah that's the number of adults that's the number of students which is zero because we don't have a school um, and that is the number of children so when children reach a certain age and it's very young it's like it's something like nine or something like that they will be sent out to work unless there's a school at which point they will be sent to school and they'll stay in school for several years, I think it's until they're either 16 or 18, at which point they will become workers. So, you want educated villagers because they work better, like they work faster, it doesn't matter what job you give them, they work faster at it if they're educated. But, you have to be very careful about when you build a school, because in Banished, your most valuable resource is your villagers. Not your food, not your wood, not your stone, not your building materials, nothing like that. It's the people, because you need the people to do the jobs. So, it's that. That's our jobs list. So, these are all of the possible jobs um, here that you can have. So, we're going to need people to farm when we've got fields. And we're going to need people to fish when we've got fishing huts. We're going to need people to physically build the things. We're going to need people to be to cut down trees to make wood you know we need people to do all of the work and they are the thing that you're going to run out of fastest so at the beginning in particular you want to hold off um, building a school because once you build a school all of those children who would be coming through at aged about nine to start work will go off to school instead and it kind of leaves you a bit snookered to be honest because you're going to have a huge gap where you'll have no adults coming through um, so you need to be secure enough and know that you've got enough people for a, you know the foreseeable future before you build a school because you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot a bit you're going to have to manage with who you've got for a very long period of time um and yeah it is yes people really are the thing you're going to run out of first right so um what do we want to do first things first we need houses and we need food because that stored food yes this is our storage barn so up here when it says 
um, 1,800 stored food. That food is in this storage barn. We can see it's inventory here. And this is our little stockpile, which all has all of our wood and iron and logs and everything in. So you can see these physically in the game. They're not just a number up there. You can actually see them. Um, and yes, so our priorities are food and houses. So I always like to start with a nice crop field at the front. Um, leave a gap so we can have a little path so people don't have to walk through the bloody field <laughs> to get to the storage barn. How big should we have it? We want it to be big enough to be able to feed these villagers, but not so massive that we're going to need loads of farmers to farm it. Because like I say, we're going to need to ration our people a bit. Should we do like 11 by 11? 10 by 10. Let's do 10 by 10. So we've built that little field. That one doesn't need to be built. Like, you know, other things need to be physically built. That one doesn't. It's just sort of already come in. And that's a person who is hiding the thing. Right. So then we need to pick what we want to plant. So you'll always start off with like one or two seeds that you can um, plant. So we can plant either squash or pumpkin. Let's go for pumpkin because it's the 1st of October today uh, when I'm recording this. So we'll go pumpkin. We'll have a Halloween themed farm. <laughs> um, yes, uh, and then later on when traders start turning up, you can buy extra seeds off them so you can get more stuff. But you need to build a trading station for that. So that's a bit way off in the bloody future, that is. So we've got a field that we're going to plant pumpkins in, but we need someone to actually plant them. So you can see over here, we've got farmer, and it says zero out of one. So that field needs one person. If it was bigger, it would need more. I mean, I can actually decide if I want to. I can decide that I want two people working on it, because I can just move that number up there. And then, you know, and then it will assign two people. Um, so, like, the work would get done faster, but it doesn't need two. It only needs one. So if I just put one in there, at that point, one of those people, I don't know which one, is now a farmer. And it'll probably move around because they like to swap jobs around and stuff. It's very rare you get the same person staying in the same job and stuff. But at, at, every t at all times, there will be one person who is a farmer on here. So somebody is now farming that field. I don't know who it is, but we'll find out later. And then we want to build a nice path. Just a dirt path. You can build a stone path later, but you need stone for that. Um, you don't need anything for a dirt path. But they walk faster on the paths than they do on the uh, on the grass. So it's not just aesthetic. And we'll put a nice path up there as well. I mean, it's kind of aesthetic. I do like a nice, nice neat path. And it always bloody bothers me that the... Um, the stockpile never lines up with the uh, the barn. You can see the barn comes out to here and the stockpile only comes out to there. So when you build a nice path around you, you just got a gap. What annoys me that does, because this is always what I do. I always start with a field at the front of the uh, stockpile and then we can put our houses around it. So we've got 18 people. How many houses do you reckon we'll need? If we go... Yeah, the, the little houses all have different designs and stuff. You can um, cycle through the designs, can't you? Yes, you can cycle through the designs if you want. We will just go with whatever it gives us. Three. Should we go six? Should we have three on each side? Yeah, let's do that. We'll have three on each side. So, what about I build that one right up to the edge? Boop. Boop. And boom, bloody perfect. That is bloody perfect. You can have planned it that way, which I actually genuinely didn't. <laughs> there we are, that is the start of our little village. But now we need 12 builders because each one of these houses needs two people to build it. So we need 12 builders, but we've only got nine people. So we can only have nine builders. So it will automatically assign certain people. Yeah, you see that one's already got one of two, so only one person's going to be working on that one. So it'll, it'll get done slower but it'll still get done so these houses are going to get built by the builders now but then then you see we've got no laborers um just unpause this so they can get on with that while i'm waffling uh yeah so now that we've got nine builders we've got no laborers now laborers are basically like dogs bodies oh it's getting frosty it's because we're in spring oh that's not good we don't want to start off with a frost man our farmer has to farm this field are you our farmer Oh, oh, fucking hell. Oh, what, what, what's your name? Arlyle. Arlyle? It's Carlyle without a C, isn't it? Arlyle, who is 18. Job farmer. Happiness. He's incredibly happy. Oh my god, he is so happy, considering he doesn't even have a house. But wow, he's just like the happiest person. He is educated. He has an iron tool. 
Um, yes, you can create steel tools later on once you get like mines and stuff. Oh yeah, because when you get more advanced, you can build mines and quarries and everything. Um, I love them with the little pickaxes. <laughs> this is how you build a house. You just come and hit the ground with a pickaxe and a house will appear. Uh, yeah, and they all have, they always have weird names. Hade or Hady or Heidi or something like that. And then what are you? What are you? Tavo. Tavo? Tavo. And your job is to be a child. That's wonderful. That's kind of like what my job is in life. Yes, what was I saying? Labourers. Yes. So labourers do like the dog's body work. They will like carry things to where they need to be. So like, for example, when you've built a farm, uh, um, a fisherman sort of which we will do over here because we're conveniently close to the river and we need to get as many sources of food as quickly as possible before winter comes. We need a good stock of food and firewood before winter comes, so we need to get a woodcutter's built as well. And maybe a forester's. Although we'll think about that. We need to plan a few things. Um, what was I saying? Labourers. Yes, that's the second time I've got fucking distracted talking about labourers. So, yes. So if you build a fisherman's hut, and the fishermen will be fishing and they will produce fish and you will see it physically in a, uh, a barrel a barrel of fish there but the fishermen probably will not take the fish to the storage barn certainly not while they're working so that's what laborers do laborers will come and do all of that and also if we decide that we want to clear some of this which we will do because we're going to be needing to build on this we're going to need to expand out we have to decide which direction we want to expand in we can tell them to clear all of the resources around here. So chop down all of the trees, all of the stone. Who the hell is this out wandering in the trees? Is this a child who's just got lost? Yes. Jace, or JC, who is zero years old. And very, very tall for a zero year old. I'm walking already. Wow. You are an incredibly impressive human. <laughs> um, <laughs> bloody hell. And she's idling. Just, she's just a zero year old child has just wandered off into the trees. Anybody concerned about this at all? Nobody concerned about this. No, that's apparently fine. Oh, another one's going out to join her. Who's this? Is this? Are you a child as well, little person? Are you a child? Yes. Gisella. Oh, that's a brilliant name. Gisella. Is that one of the uh, ugly sisters? Or is it Chrisella? Is it Gisella or Chrisella? Gisella. Gisella. It's a good name anyway. I like that name. Yes, yeah, so if we decide that we want to clear a load of this space clear out all the trees all the stone all the iron and everything so that we can get the resources but also we can build on the place and um, that's what the laborers will do um and when people have a job but then they're not needed in that moment they'll sort of become a laborer so you can see now that we've built houses that has gone down to four we only need four builders but we've got nine people assigned as builders so the ones who aren't building will now just sort of you know do the work of laborers and also things like you can put limits on stuff. So, for example, when we get a woodcutter, we'll be turning wood into firewood. You can put a limit on how much firewood, because we've got limited storage space. So you can put a limit on how much firewood we actually need at any given time. And once it hits that limit, the woodcutter will stop producing firewood until the, um, what is stored goes down again. So at that point, they'll just sort of start walking around as a labourer. They won't just hang around doing nothing. They are very, you know, they're intuitive. It's a good, the AI, the AI is quite good and quite sensible and you don't need to hold its hand too much. Right, so, we've got some houses now. People have moved in. That's marvellous. I always love the fucking names that they have in this game. Dormando and Christian and Sabrinley? Sabrinley. Sabrinley a boy or a girl? That's a girl, isn't it? Yeah. Dormando and Christian. And what's concerning me a little bit here is you've got... Dormando and Christy, this is like, this is, is this like dad, mum and child? Because if so, mum is 12 years old. Just, just, just think about that for a moment. Just think about that. And you can see our uh, amount of stored food has gone down quite dramatically. That's not because they've eaten it. That's because they've put it in their houses. So this only s shows what we've got stored actually in the storage barn. But they take stuff from the storage barn and put it in their houses. So that's why the firewood and the food has gone down so dramatically. It's not because it's been used, it's because it's being stored in the houses. Um, and then, you know, they will use it. Oh my god, there's a lot of people living in that house. Jesus, will we actually end up needing all of the houses? We've only got five people um, without houses at the minute, and we've got two still left to build. Who have we got in this one? We've got Messica, Mes Messica, Callus, Tavo, or Te Tavo, Tavo, Weaverly, and Gisela. And that's a 17-year-old 
and a 12 year old with like a four year old, a three year old and a one year old. I I'm going to say that these are all siblings, all right? That's the only thing that really makes sense there. Well, maybe they're just roommates, who knows? Um, Ty Lord and Di Di Dimona? Ty, Ty Lord and Dimona, that, that's brilliant. And weirdly, those are the only two so far that are actually old enough to conceivably be a couple and have children, and yet they don't. So there we go, and who's living in this one over here? Um, Lalano, Rainy, or Rain, and Brennit. Brennit, and again we have 18, 15, and 7. Yeah, because it automatically pairs up like male, females, and children. To make it seem like oh it's a family but the ages just concern me they really do i mean she's 15 and she's got a seven-year-old child that doesn't work right is that our farmer who doesn't have a home yet we haven't given our farmer a home our farmer is the most important person here at the minute he's the one making sure we'll get food for winter because the farm does work like a proper farm like he'll do the harvest in sort of late summer early autumn and that'll give us a big food influx for winter because it's harder to get food in winter, so we need to build up our food stores. Speaking of which, I want to build a fisherman's hut. You really do want to be quick off the mark as far as the whole food situation goes. So, since we've got the river conveniently close, we build that yellow circle is the um, area in which they will gather. Obviously only in water for the fishermen. Um, and considering that they've got a boat in an entire river, it seems a little bit daft that that's like the only area that they'll fish in. They will f they will stray no further than here. Um, <laughs> you think the fish will probably just work out not to linger there too long? Never mind. Um, and if we extend our little path out a little bit, our little path where can we go to? We can go to there. There we go, and that'll be a little fisherman's hut. We can have people fishing, and then we only need six builders, so we've got three labourers now. Um, and then I want to work out exactly where I want to expand to and where I want my forest area to be. Because you need a forest close to the village. Because you need hunters to hunt wild animals, you need gatherers to gar gather berries, and you need a herbalist to make medicine. And all three of those people need a forest. Also, you need wood. And just chopping down trees, it'll only work for so long just chopping down all of these trees. Um, because, obviously they won't grow back again. But if you build a forester's, then they are chopping down trees and planting them. So, you know, the forest stays a forest and you've got a, a nice steady income of wood. So, you might, yeah, you need a forest close to the village. We also need to expand. So I think, because we've got this annoying hill in the way here, and that bit round there is a bit narrow, if we expand out in this direction towards the big lake, which looks rather like a crater, doesn't it? That looks like a fucking asteroid has hit there or something at some point. <laughs> Lovely lake, that is. Yeah, so if we expand out towards the lake, and then we can have, you know, like, lakeside properties along here, and more fishermen's huts and stuff like that, as the village expands out this way, and then th this here can be our forest. And we want to get rid of all of the stone and the iron in the forest, because then there's more room for them to plant trees, so there'll be more trees. But we'll do that at a later date. So if we want to get rid of all of this stuff, we want to hit, where is it? No, that's not the thing I want. Uh, remove resources, there we go. So if, for now, we want to clear... Um, hang on, I can't see because it's fucking raining. Bloody hell. It's like it's doing in the real world. <laughs> it's proper pissing it down out there, it really is. And it's getting dark early and stuff. Like, we're getting proper into winter here. Winter's, like, really just appeared out of nowhere all of a sudden. It was, like, really summery last week. Um, and now it's just like, oh, winter's here now. Oh, okay. Did we not need to have October somewhere in the middle? Apparently not. Um, it's fucking snow warnings and everything. For October? I mean, really? Like, March? Yeah, but October? Very strange. Very strange. Anyway, yes. So you can see now all these little things have little orange X's under them. That means that the people are going to go out and clear them. And it's going to be done by the labourers, of which we have three. Um, so if we just set time going again. You can speed time up if you want. But uh, I like to play Banished slowly, you know? It's the kind of game that I put on in the background when I'm doing other stuff and I just keep sort of checking in. Um, <laughs> it's a lovely game, Banished, man. <coughs> um, oh, you've got a snowflake above you. That means that um, you don't have any firewood. 
Ooh, are we, sh are we short on firewood? Maybe I've built too many houses. Hmm, I'll have to build a woodcutter's. Um, wow, we're also short on wood, though. That's because we haven't been chopping down any trees. I should have been a bit quicker off the mark with this whole clearing these trees thing. Um, yes, so we're going to have to wait for them to chop down some of these trees to get some more wood. But it would have been nice to build a woodcutter's. What's that telling me? The reserve of firewood is low. Yes, I know. But we're in early spring. We're going into summer. It's going to be getting warmer. We don't need it too much. And the reserves of log is low as well. Logs is low as well, yes. It's because I've built too much stuff before gathering resources. That's what I've done. I've done it all backwards. But, you know, we needed houses to, like, live in. Um, let's put down... We won't have the resources to build it yet, but when we do, uh, let's put down a little woodcutter's... I love the woodcutter's cabin. It looks so cute, doesn't it? Let's put it there next to the storage box. Um, and build the path out a little bit. Build the path out. Where can we put it? Yeah, this is the tighter roads mod, this, that's letting me build this actually, you know, on the property. You wouldn't have been able to originally. But it just means that they can walk about faster and stuff. And it looks prettier, man. It looks prettier. That's always the most important thing, that everything looks pretty. Do you have enough logs? No, you don't. Oh, we still have 14, though. You should have enough. We, we should have enough to build a fisherman's place. And then people sh over here should be, like, chopping down trees. Okay. I mean, you've clearly just cleared some stone. I actually want you to chop down the trees. But never mind. I might have made that area too big, actually. You've got to watch this because they're annoying in that when you when you pick a, an area to clear, they'll start from the furthest away point and work inwards. Yeah, you can see there, they're starting out here. It's like, really, it would be more convenient if you did it the other way. But never mind. Uh, oh, all of our houses are finished. Now who's living in here? Oh, is anybody living in that one? No, we've got an empty house. Man, guys, you've got, like, you're a bit overcrowded. We've got two overcrowded houses and an empty one just fucking sitting there doing that. It's a fucking waste of wood, that was. I mean, obviously, it, it looks very pretty, and now it's all, like, equal on each side, but that's not the point, man. So what have we got? Arlyle, our farmer. Um, Eleanor, that's quite a normal name for Banished. Irvine, Hady, and Jace, or JC? JC. We'll go with JC, because it's a girl, isn't it? JC sounds better. Um, yes, so JC is our zero-year-old child who likes to just wander off sometime. Uh, oh, she's playing, apparently. Playing does not look any different to idling to me, but never mind. Uh, what are you doing? The Leno is cold and is finding someplace warm. Well, that's nice. Um, <laughs> do you live in this house by any chance? No, he doesn't. He's just going to stand under the eaves of that one for whatever reason. And uh, there is, what's his name? I've already forgotten his name, Arlyle, planting our little crops. And what I like about this is, he actually does, because obviously he doesn't have, like, a tractor or anything, or a, you know, combine of and he never will. We're not going to advance or anything in Banish. There's not, like, a technology tree or anything like that. So he's had to start planting at one end and moving slowly along, and it actually does grow, like, at a different rate. So I think he started at this side, did he? Did he do it that way? So these ones are growing faster than those ones. And you'll actually see it as they start to grow. You'll see that one side will be growing faster than the other because, you know, it's the order that he planted them in. That's really cool attention to detail that I very much appreciate. Um, oh, we've got 16 logs now. We've got some from somewhere. <laughs> okay, now we've got six builders and we only need five. Bloody hell, man, guys. Uh, what you tell me is low food? Oh, fuck, it is a bit, isn't it? Oh, dear, is that because everybody's filled up their houses? I mean, you've got 266 potatoes, love. How much have you got? You've got 444. 444? Jesus. Yeah, so literally the only thing we have to eat at the, at the minute is potatoes. That is what they are having for breakfast, lunch, and tea. And we need to sort that out because their health is going to start to drop. Because, I mean, only eating potatoes, you're not getting your fibre day, are you? Getting plenty of fibre, I'll tell you that. 77 potatoes. How many have you got? 341 potatoes and no firewood, which is why you're cool. Um, and what have you got? Uh, 263 potatoes. <laughs> Imagine having 263 potatoes in your house. That's what they've got in their larder. 263 potatoes. So now we've only got 222 stored. Oh, hang on. We've got some from we've got some from somewhere. What have we got in there? Mushrooms. Oh yes, they'll be gathering mushrooms. Um, so I think that was brought in with the Tree of Life mod as well, because usually you need a gatherer to gather mushrooms, but with the Tree of Life mod they're just growing wild out here, so when I've told them to clear all of the resources, 
they are also picking up mushrooms and stuff. So we'll we'll get like wild berries and stuff that will end up in there. So you know, you can have some mushrooms with your teddies if you really want. <laughs> what do you make with mushrooms and teddies? Just have like baked teddy with some mushrooms on it. Oh, doesn't sound very appetising, does it? I mean, I love teddies and I love mushrooms, but no. Oh, our fisherman's hut is built. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pause. Yes, our fisherman's hut is built and it's got a question mark above it because we don't have any fishermen. So, it's telling us that we need four fishermen. Now, I do not have to put four fishermen in. I can just put one fisherman in if I want and he will just fish, but he will, you know, obviously produce like a quarter of the amount of fish as four would. So I'm going to give them four, or am I? Yes, because we don't need five builders anymore. We only need three. And we won't need any once the woodcutters are built. So we'll give them the four fishermen that they need. But we can bring that down again later if we end up needing people to do other jobs. But right now our priority is just to get as much food in as possible before winter. And then we can start thinking about building the foresters over here. I mean, I want to. I'll have to clear all of the stone and iron from here, but... I have to do that after they've finished clearing all of this, which is probably going to take them a wee while, to be honest with you. Hmm. Yes. So how far out are they going to, like, there? Yeah, and then I'll want them to clear all of the stone and iron from here so that they can plant more trees. But we'll have to build the foresters first. By the time they've cleared all of this, though, we'll have plenty of wood, at least for a while. So it's not desperate, but we'll need a hunter's cabin, which will be a bit... Yeah. We'll need a hunter's cabin to bring in, um, meat and a gatherers to bring in fruit. And then a herbalist, because if we don't have any stored medicine, people's health is gonna to start to drop, and you know, there might be a plague. <laughs> By plague, I mean, you know, some of them might just catch a cold or something like that. And there is our woodcutter's cabin. So if we get a woodcutter going on, we can get some firewood, and then you can all stop being cold. Although, you know, there's that bloody many of you living in the house. <laughs> our Lyle and Eleanor. He's 19 and she's 13. Let's not question that too closely. Um, <laughs> bit dodgy, but let's not question it. And oh, look! Somebody has mastered the art of fishing. Rainy! Rainy, you are doing such a brilliant job of fishing there, my love. <laughs> 16 years old. I think you've slightly fallen off the pier. Should anybody tell her that she probably doesn't need a rod when she's literally under the fucking water? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, she's enthusiastic, I'll give her that. I can't question her commitment. Um, who else have we got? Dormando is one of our fishermen. And Laleno. Laleno. That's really hard to say. Laleno. Yes, he's one of our fishermen. The deer are walking across our pier. This is all fascinating stuff going on here, man. The deer are walking across the pier. Rainy doesn't know how to fish just doesn't understand what a fishing dock is for. One of the children has come to watch, that's Brennett, who's eight years old, and he's playing in the fishing dock. Um, at eight years old, I think you've only got like a tiny bit of time left before you actually become a labourer yourself. So um, yes, enjoy it, child. Enjoy it. Because we start them young in this place and they've run out of firewood as well. Uh, look, look, she's on it, all right? Who's our woodcutter? Diamona is our woodcutter. She's, she's, she's doing the best she can, all right? Just stop whinging. She's getting there. Oh, farmers have switched jobs. Who have we got now? Eleanor. Is that not Arlyle's wife? Oh, they've swapped jobs because she was a she was a builder and he was a farmer and they've decided to swap. That's nice. And I say wife. I mean, yeah, 19 and 14 now, so she's growing up a little bit. Uh, you've got to not question the ages too much because. Hang on, we'll just take our builders out of there because we don't need them anymore. Um, yeah, so this is like how many years we've been here. So, so this is year one, and we're in late spring, so we've been here a month. And she's gone from 13 to 14, and she will probably be about 17 before the year is out. So they age faster than time is actually progressing. But just, like, don't question it. It's fine. So we've got two sources of food going on now. We've got fish and we've got farming, and they're also bringing in a few bits from all of this stuff, but, you know, not of consequence. I think next we really need a hunter's cabin. Um... But it's probably better to focus on gathering resources for a while so that we've actually got the building material. I mean, we can't even, like... They've barely dented this all, this lot, I don't know. Give our fishermen hard at work, that's Messica. Oh, Messica's a man! Oh, I assume Messica would be a woman. It would be like, 
Mesco is making the same <laughs> the same mistake as uh, Rainy did, but ne never mind. Um, yeah, the, the Mesco would be a woman, like, you know, Jessica, but with an M. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah, he's falling off the fucking pier. Uh, there's Rainy. Rainy's figured it out now. Rainy's figured out how to do things, but him, no, no. <laughs> he reckons she had the right idea to begin with. Is she going to go and fall off the pier again? No, she's going to stand there. Well, we've got, got Dormanda. Oh, his health's a bit low. Yeah, health's going down. And that'll be because um, there's not a very, very diet. There's absolutely no medicine, which is just like herbs. Um, and also the firewood problem might be contributing to that as well. And there's Laleno, Laleno, which I can't say. Um, Laleno is working, apparently. What does he have in his, in his inventory? He has 12 fish. He has 12 fish in his pocket. All of our labourers are hard at work going out here, chopping down trees and mining stone. There's Callus. You see, I would have thought Callus would have been a man, but no, Callus is a girl. Uh, and she's 13 years old and she's already at work. Because you know what? It's a cruel, cruel world, man. It's a cruel world. We've got, you know, jobs that need doing. Can it be dithering around, playing around? Isn't it looking pretty? <laughs> I do. That's my favourite thing about Banished, it's just making it all pretty. Making it all look lovely and nice, and have a nice field of pumpkins. Very seasonally appropriate uh, for the time of year that it is. Uh, I love this time of year. It's proper, like, over the past two days. So it's the 1st of October today. But over the past, like, two or three days, the weather has turned. And it's, like, you know, started getting dark. I mean, it's been gradually getting darker and stuff like that. But then it, it's sort of all of a sudden, it's like the mornings are dark and the evenings are dark. And I've got the lights on more often and I haven't put the heating on and stuff like that. I love this time of year. I love the feel of it. I sort of come alive. I don't know what it is. It's just something about this time of year. Like, I, I'm definitely a winter girl and not a summer girl. You know how people get um, winter depression? I get summer depression. Like, genuinely, when summer is coming, I've got, like, this just sort of feel of, like, dread. Where it's just like, oh, it's going to be light all the time. It's going to be hot. And that basically means I'm not going to sleep as much. And you know what? Pretty much my entire life revolves around how much sleep I get. Like, I have to have between 8 and 10 hours a night. And if I don't, it's like, it's the difference between me being able to handle literally anything the world could throw at me and me curling up in a ball in the corner and just sobbing because somebody looks at me the wrong way. But honestly, like, sleep, everything revolves around it. And in the summer, I just don't sleep because it's just light and warm. And I just don't like it. And I just go into this kind of slump where I don't want to do anything. And it's just kind of like, oh. And then as soon as autumn starts coming and it starts getting colder and darker. And it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just something about it. I get this little flutter. It's like, oh, winter's coming. It's so exciting. Of course, once you're in like the actual depths of winter, like fucking February, it gets a bit, it's getting a bit boring by that point. But um, sort of relieved when spring comes. But this time of year, from like... 1st of October till January, really. My favourite time of the year. I fucking love it. Brilliant. It's just something about it. Of course, I mean, also, you've got lots of exciting things. You've got Halloween. Then you've got um, Bonfire Night. Then you've got my birthday, the most important day of the year, obviously. And then you've got Christmas. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just like there's a buzz in the air. Um, fucking hell, we've had a lot of children be born. That was eight before, now there's eleven. Jesus, how many? Who's been who's been procreating? Um, Leleno and Rainy have had Garlandra. And Leleno's 19 and Rainy's 17, so that's not too bad, really. I mean, you know, in medieval terms. Uh, that's Garlandra. Garlandra? Garlandra. That's quite a nice name, actually. Although it's a boy, I would have thought that would have been a girl. Never mind. Um, um, anybody here? Nobody knew there. Uh, Ty Lord has for some reason decided to move out. Ooh, there might have been, there might have been arguments and fallings out. There might have been shenanigans going on there. <laughs> He's just decided to have his own house. He's picked the fucking biggest one of the lot as well. <laughs> it's a fucking huge house compared to the others. I mean, I think that one's a flipping bungalow. <laughs> and He's got two stories all to himself. Who have we got over here? Oh, Diamona has had Talonza. Talonza. But she's raising him alone. Did Time Lord, Time Lord moved out? Oh, oh, we've got drama unfolding here. They had a kid and then they split up and he's living on his own. <gasps> it's 
just village drama that is village drama and then anybody here nobody there and we've got lena lena they tell dormando and christian have had christian is 13. <sighs> sometimes this game worries me you know it really does <laughs> it's just it's just not question and he's 17 man like i mean if he was 13 as well it wouldn't be quite so bad but <sighs> jesus christ man <laughs> So we've now got more children than we've got adults. That's it. That's wonderful. I need some of you to grow up so I can put you to work. That's what I need. I need you to clear all of these resources. I don't care about you having happy childhoods. I want you to be workers. I want you to be breaking your backs in the fields. That's what I need. So we're into summer. So we're, we're sort of halfway through the year. I really want to be thinking about building. I mean, how's our food doing? Not great, to be honest. How much food have you brought in? You've brought in 282. That's with four fishermen. I mean, that is currently what is going to keep us going through the whole winter because he's going to harvest, or she, who's doing the, who's the farmer this week? Oh, Lyle, he's taking over again. Um, so he's going to harvest all of this, like at the end of summer, so pretty soon. So we'll get a big influx of pumpkins, which will be nice. But then going into winter, there'll be like nothing. All we've got to sustain us is the fish. So I feel like we want to build something else. But I don't know if we could build it in time, to be honest with you, because we really want a hunter's cabin, but we'll have to build it a bit out of the way. Um, hunter's cabin, hunter's cabin, it's the deer one, isn't it? Yeah. So, hunting cabin. Hmm. It's not really much of a good spot for it, to be honest with you. Because, you know, you want it to be surrounded by trees. I think. Although, to be honest with you, the animals just kind of wander everywhere, don't they? Regardless of whether there's trees or not. So maybe, maybe you don't need to build near, near trees. Maybe I've been playing this game wrong all this time. <laughs> um, but we're clearing this area because we want it to expand outwards. I mean, the perfect place would be like here. But it's way too far away. So we've got a little forest area here instead. But, I don't know. I mean, do we want to be sending them across the water? They can't cross a river like that without building a bridge. So... And we're not going to build a bridge yet. If we put it like there, because that's relatively near to the village. Um, but it is covering lots of trees and stuff. Thing is, those trees there, which I'm pointing to the screen and that's not helping you, is it? Those trees there will be cut down soon. So I suppose... Oh, I don't know. There isn't really a convenient place to put it. I mean, if we put it up down here, they'll hunt down in that area. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I can't decide. I hate having to make decisions. That's way too far away from the village. Maybe just put it there. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, this cow's just up there. We're not going to be chopping down these trees because there's no point and, you know, they make the place look prettier. So, okay, so if we put our hunter's cabin, like, there. That should be enough of a capture area. Hopefully, for them to like, you know. We need three builders for that. Oh, we've now only got one labourer. <laughs> but you've got to watch them, because sometimes if I've told them to gather these resources, the ones that the builders might carry on gathering resources, even though there's now something that needs to be built. They're buggers for that. But what you can do is you can... Somewhere around here. Somewhere, there. Hmm... Yeah, increase priority. So if I increase the priority of that, they should hopefully get their fucking fingers out and go and build it for me. Hopefully! <laughs> Although it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, and we'll put a nice path out to it. Just because they walk faster on the paths. So, a nice dirt road. Scoot it around the houses. There we go. So hopefully that'll get built before winter. And then they'll be able to hunt animals through the winter. Hopefully, maybe not. I need, we need to clear like a load of stone off of that. How much do we need? We need to remove 82 things before that can start being built. And then it'll need logs and stone. The firewood situation is resolving itself. The food is ticking up. But that's, be yeah, you see, that's because the pumpkins are being harvested. That's why the food's picking up. I'm a bit concerned, to be honest, about the food situation and whether we're going to make it through the winter. Because I'll tell you something, if you make it through your first winter, you're probably sorted at that point in Banished. Make it through your first winter, you're doing good. Um, but, you know, if, if something's going to go wrong, it's likely to go wrong in the first winter or the second winter. If you get past, like, five winters, at that point, you're probably sorted. 
Like, it's very unlikely anything will happen to you after that that will uh, cause any problems. But, uh, yes, yeah, so you can see that absolutely nobody is working on this fucking thing. Uh, oh, wait, wait, no, I tell a lie. Ty Lord is! Oh, Ty Lord, darling, are you one of our builders? Are you our builders come to uh, uh, job builder? Yes, our builders will come to build the on this cabin, although they're building the path first, which is kind of sensible, I suppose. Because then, you know, they can get out of here quicker. And Diamona... Oh, Diamona and Ty Lord are having to work together. Oh, awkward, man. Awkward, because they've obviously split up had their kid and then they've split up and they're you know living in different houses and she's raising him on her own they're having to work together look at them look at them on opposite sides just not talking to each other no eye contact <laughs> no eye contact yeah no she's walking away making any excuse to uh, to not have to work with him <laughs> or maybe she's become a builder as an excuse to work with him Mm, or maybe he's become a builder as an excuse to work with her. Maybe they're trying to patch things up. Or, or maybe it's just like mind games going on. Ooh, who knows? I mean, it's a very small village. There's only, what, 21 people? 21 people in the whole village. I mean, of course, what would be fascinating would be if somebody else moves in with him. Yeah, that'll really get the, uh, the gossip mill going, won't it? I mean, who could move in with him? I think all of the other ladies who are old enough, like who are adults, are spoken for, aren't they? But when one of these children grows up, you know, might move in with him, although considering that they are con they are considered adult at, at the age of like, I can't remember, he's nine and he's still considered a child. It might be 10. Is it 10 that they become workers? Possibly. Um, so if they're considered, yeah, if they're considered um, an adult at 10, because once the game considers them an adult, they'll just, you know, start having kids of their own. At ten. <laughs> At ten. And spe especially remember, he's not actually ten. He's probably about four. Because you age quicker than, uh, well, they age quicker than the uh, the actual time passes. But, no. Don't question it too much. Um, oh, yes. That's reached the the maximum capacity. Capacity. I will remember how to speak in a moment. Capacity. Yeah, so there's a fuel limit of 200 on the firewood. So once there is 200 firewood stored, our woodcutter will stop producing firewood until that number goes down and then she'll start um, cutting wood again. So now she's probably just working as a, as a labourer. Is she? Yeah, she's picking up resources. So she's just like doing what the labourers are doing until she's needed to cut uh, more wood again. And the thing I like is that you can look, yeah, you can look in the inventory, so she's got two logs in there already. So everything is always accounted for. Like, you've got the wood that's in the storage place, and then you've got wood stored in here because she needs the wood to turn that into firewood. Um, and you know, you've got the food that's stored in here, and then you've got food that's stored in people's houses, and then you'll also have probably stuff that's just lying around. I mean, you can see the crates of fish. That's an actual crate of fish that at some point someone will pick up and take to the storage barn. So yeah, you can see all of the resources. They're not just numbers, they are physically represented in the world. Which is nice. He's almost brought in all of our pumpkins and we've now got 1,000 food stored. So that was more pumpkins than I was anticipating, I'll be honest with you. We've got, how many pumpkins have we got? We've got 586 pumpkins. I mean... <laughs> I, c I can count them along here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There was maybe ten in that row. I don't think we have that many pumpkins, to be honest with you. I think there's been some um, some fiddling of the numbers going on here. But anyway, apparently we've got 586 pumpkins stored. So that's nice. We've got pumpkins in the houses as well. No, we're still just eating the potatoes, are we? Yeah, everybody's still just eating the potatoes. It, but they haven't quite caught up that there's like other stuff to eat. Get, guys, guys, there's there's quite a lot of other. You don't have to just be eating. But oh, this lot, yeah, Diamona and Talzona, they've fucking figured it out. They've got fish, they've got mushrooms, they've got also potatoes. Having a fucking feast over here, man. Everybody else is just like, oh no, we're just gonna eat the potatoes. We don't like all this new fangled food that we've got going on over here. Fucking fish and pumpkins. Can I be doing that? Just want me teddy stuff. Oh, one of our children has grown up. Which child has grown up? We had two nine-year-olds, didn't we? So, you're still nine. Ty Lord lives on his own. Brennett. Brennett is ten and he's now a labourer. Bless his little heart. He's a ten-year-old labourer. Should we have a look and see what Brennett's up to? What are you up to, labourer? You, you're working as a ten-year-old. Marvellous. What are you doing? You've got your pickaxe. 
Where are you going? Where are you headed? What are you doing? Are you headed for the iron? Oh, he's headed for the iron. Yeah. He is mining iron at the age of 10. So this dark grey one is iron and then the, the light grey one is stone. Um, he is mining iron with his pickaxe. Bless your little heart, love. And this is it. This is you for life. They don't retire or anything. They work until death. They work until death. This will be you working for the rest of your life at age 10. You won't even remember what life was like before. Uh, our hunter cabin is nearly complete. Wait, I say nearly complete. One of 45 built. Who's this? Diamona is working hard with Callus. Ty Lord isn't here. He must be on a break or something. Should we see where Ty Lord is? Get rid of that. Oh, is this him? No, that's Messica. Ty Lord's hiding. Um... <laughs> I was hiding because Diamona's there. What's he doing? He's getting something to eat, is he? Oh, I, he looks like he's been out gathering resources. He's been avoiding working on the uh, on the hunter's cabin. That's what he's been doing. Thing of maybe getting a little bit tense there. A little bit, uh, a little bit awkward between those two. Does he have anyone living with him yet? No, no, he's still on his own. He's a 22-year-old labourer. Oh, he's a labourer now. Oh, he's not one of the builders. Oh, he, he quit the building job. Oh, maybe it became too much working with the ex. Maybe that's what was going on. Uh, so who's our fourth builder? Third builder? Third Oh, we only, we've only got three. Well, that's all of them then. Callus, Diamona, and Thingy. And now we don't need any at all. Hang on a minute. Pauls! Um, <coughs> get rid of all of our builders. So we've got five labourers. And we need three hunters. So you can have three hunters. Because we need you to bring in as much food as possible. Although the food situation is fine. But you need to keep on top of it. Because, like, for the minute, the food situation's fine. But if you... You know, obviously, we're getting more and more people. More children are being born and stuff. And if you if you let it slide, even just a little bit, it can get out of control really quickly. So, yeah, you need to constantly be building new things for um, bringing in food and stuff. Because, you know, it will get to a point where all of a sudden... It's like, oh, we're fine for food. We're fine for food. We're fine for food. Oh, my God, we've got no food. It is that quick. There's just, like, a, a little tipping point where all of a sudden you'll have too many people and not enough food. Um, so yes, definitely keep on top of the food situation. So we're in early autumn and we've got plenty of firewood and we've got plenty of food at the moment. Uh, we've just built our hunter's cabin. This area is getting cleared. I need to start thinking about where we want to build our foresters. Because while at the minute, I mean, they're bringing in wood from chopping down these trees, but I'd like to have a sort of stable influx of wood. And, you know, it would be nice to have a, a, a proper forester's lodge to build up the forest a little bit. So what the forester will do is they'll chop down trees and they will plant trees um, in the area of that yellow circle. So we don't really want it there because we don't want these trees to be replanted because we want to build here. So we'll need it a bit further out, but not across the river. Probably about there-ish. Um, there-ish. And we've moved it up a bit because we don't mind th I don't mind those trees being there. So there would probably be pretty perfect, to be honest with you. Turn it round. And we will put it there. I don't I'm not bothered about it being built yet, so I won't actually assign builders to it. I'm just planning at the minute. Um but you can, once you've built the foresters, you can tell it to only plant trees and not chop down trees. So if you've got an area that you've cleared and then you've decided, oh, actually, no, I want that as a forest, you can put a forester's down and literally create a forest. Um, or if you end up with, like here, we've got big lots of big amounts of iron over here. Now, if I cleared all of that iron and that stone and I decided that I wanted them to... Um, so we've got more room to plant trees. And if I decided that I wanted them to build up the forest before we start chopping the trees down, then I could just tell them to, to only plant trees and not chop down and they would, you know, create a very thick, dense forest. Oh, we've got a child wandering off again. Are you a child? You're probably a child, are you? Uh, no, you're a hunter. That's what you're doing. You're hunting. You're doing your job. I thought you were a child wandering off. It's Diamona has decided to become a hunter. Who are our other hunters? I want to know if Ty Lord's a hunter. <laughs> has Ty Lord become a hunter? No, he's still a labourer. He's still hiding. He's, he's he's staying away from her. And she's got a job that's like out in the forest so she doesn't have to see him too much. It's very crafty, that was. Very, very crafty. Um, and then we're also going to need a herbalist, otherwise our health is going to start suffering. So at the minute we've got three stored medicine because they're probably picking it up out in the wild while they're clearing all of this. But we need an actual dedicated herbalist. Because um, while at the minute there's no illness, you know, it might happen. So you need to plan ahead. That's what Banished is all about. It's about planning ahead. It's about solving problems before they become problems. 
Um, and she'll need a nice foresty area to pick herbs in, so we can maybe put it opposite the foresters, actually. Um, or at the back of the hunter's cabin. We'll have a nice little foresty kind of community down here. Um, about there. Drag her in a bit. About there. Yeah, so we've got a herbalist, and then we'll need a gatherer's hut as well. Um, which one's the gatherers? It'll be in food, food, gatherers, that's an orchard. I don't think we'll have any trees that we can plant yet. I have to buy them off a trader first, but uh, we don't have a trading post. Um, probably gatherers, so we can just put it at the back of the foresters, can't we? Um, and then we can have, yeah, we can just have a nice little foresty community out there. Out in the forest, isn't that nice? We can build nice little dirt paths. Um, if I can work out, <laughs> you kind of have to try and work out where you can put the paths. So if I remember correctly, the herbalists, you can't see very clearly here, the herbalists, you can get a path right through out the other side, can't you? Yes. So, build a little path, like, so that's going through the herbalists, and then we can have it join up to the, um, the gatherer's hut. So... Like, where's that path? Oh, oh, I'm confused. I'm confused. Wait, and then we join it up to that path? That should be it all joined up. We can just make it look all pretty, and then we might put a few houses out here as well. Um, oh, those two are very close to each other. Have I built the... Wait, have I built the foresters and the... Uh, the herbalists like properly dead on each other. Oh, I think I fucking have as well. You know? <laughs> Put a door over there, and then you can. And why it can't be placed through there? Oh, flipping heck! What have I done? Why can't there all be with one place there? I don't know. I don't understand. Anyway, never mind. Um, what are you doing? Messica, you're getting something to eat. You're a hunter. Oh, you're hunting. Yes. I keep forgetting I've got hunters. I'm like, why are all these people wandering around the forest? Because they're the hunters that you've just assigned to fucking hunt the place, man. And we now need seven builders for all of this crap. But what you can do is you can, I believe, pause it. Yeah, you can put it on pause. So even if I do assign builders now, they won't build the forester lodge. So when the time comes, I can prioritise which one I want builders to be... Um, Assigned to oh, frost is coming. Winter is a coming. That fucking barrel of pumpkins has been sitting out there for fucking ages. Will somebody pick it up and put it in the fucking storage barn? Oh my god, can't get the fucking stuff these days, can you? How's Tyler doing? Has he got a friend yet? No, it, no, no friend. Doll. Diamona is still there raising Talonza on her own. Um, Delonza, who is already won, despite the fact that, you know, she hasn't been here for a year. That's actually kind of annoying, though, because if they're not living together, then the game won't give them any more children. So, unless somebody else moves in with Diamona, that'll be it. And I kind of, I want expansion, guys. I want, I want, you know, I want children being born and stuff. Um, somebody else has aged up. It'd be Irvine, was it? Irvine is now a labourer. You're a very, very tall ten-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, so you're now a labourer, so we've got extra labourers. Um, I don't know whether I want them to start building all of this stuff out here yet. I don't know. Hmm. Probably not. Not as we're going into winter. I want them to focus on... I want them to focus on getting this cleared first. Because then we'll have the resources to actually build out here. So if we focus on... Because, I mean, they're almost there. We've done most of it. Um. And then... Yeah, food's going down a bit because obviously we have that massive influx from um, when this was harvested. Oh, actually, we don't need our farmer anymore. We can unassign our farmer because there's nobody to... Um, there's nothing to do. Now that the harvest has been brought in, there's nothing to do until spring. You can't plant anything over winter. So we've got ourselves an extra labourer over the winter. Um, and then you just have to remember to reassign them. Like at the minute, I've just got... At the minute, it doesn't matter. I can just, I can, you know, assign a farmer there, but there's nothing for him to do, so he'll work as a labourer. But later on, when you've got more jobs and things are a bit tighter, 
you want to bring your farmers off from farming to give them other jobs um, but then you have to remember to reassign them <laughs> in spring otherwise you know you just end up not planting anything but we're at minus three degrees and uh, we've still got plenty of firewood like I say the food is going down a little bit but we're treading water I think we're doing, we're doing quite well actually I mean to have that much food stored up near the end of the first year that's not bad at all although like i say i do have mods and stuff installed to um i was telling me that something was full probably firewood i do yes i do have mods installed to um make the game even easier than it already was <laughs> so you know <laughs> just to make sure it's the most chill experience that there is uh, i'm going to build a little path along the side of there which can connect up to here wherever this will let us fucking build paths nowhere for whatever reason. I don't know why it's not letting me build one there. That seems weird. Well, anyway. You can see our uh, number of coats has gone down. Did we have 30 to begin with? I think we had 30, and now we've got 9, because obviously they'll be taking them to where? So, it's not... <coughs> Sorry, I just had a... I had a minor nosebleed that I had to deal with for a moment there. <coughs> Ahem. I think I'm alright. Right, right uh, what's that telling me? It's telling me that the storage for logs thrown and iron is near capacity. Yes, we probably need another storage area because you can see that's the official storage area and then somebody's just shoved some logs there because there's no room left so we need to build another little storage area. That is no bother at all. Um, where should we put it? Where do we want another storage area? I mean, we could just put it like along there. We could do that, couldn't we? It's like along... Along there, that's quite a big stockpile. It's too large, apparently. Uh, can, yeah. That's too large, but there's fine, but that's too large. How can this stockpile be too large? I don't understand. Never mind. We'll put it along there like that. It's an extra stockpile. That's fine. Um, and then, you know, our village could be built out around there. Oh, it's going to look so pretty, guys. It's going to look so pretty. It's the best thing about Banished, just making everything look pretty. Um, oh, we're into early winter. Right, this is it. This is winter. We are going into winter with 208 firewood and 932 food. That's fine. Our health has gone down, but that's probably because of lack of a herbalist and such things. Still, nobody has picked up those fucking pumpkins. <laughs> Will somebody pick up those flipping pumpkins? Like, oh, there's a chicken. There's a wild chicken just wandering across our field. That's nice, isn't it? Somebody pick up those bloody pumpkins. Honestly, somebody might want to eat those pumpkins. Are these not caught up that there's more stuff to eat than potatoes yet? Yes! Yes, they have full cupboards. They have fish and potatoes and pumpkins. Marvellous. So what you can do is you can have some nice grilled fish with some nice boiled teas um, or roast teas, however you prefer your teas. I mean, with fish, I would have them boiled, but, you know, each to their own. Um, and then you can have some pumpkin for afters. Although pumpkin, I mean, there's not much in a pumpkin. I always think pumpkin, I mean, p pumpkins are just like in the shops now for uh, Halloween. We've, got, we've, got, we've finally got the pumpkins in the shops for Halloween. And I always look at pumpkins and I think, apart from carving lamps... I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do with a pumpkin? There's not much in a pumpkin, is the thing. Like, there's, there's physically not much there. How many pumpkins would you need to, like, make a meal out of? I don't even know what pumpkin tastes like, to be honest. I've never eaten pumpkin. It probably doesn't taste much, does it? Because you're just, like, when you're carving a, a lantern from a pumpkin, you just scoop all of the insidey bits out, and it's almost all seeds. Like, there's not really anything else in there, to be honest. Like... You yeah, know, but anyway, they've got 115 of them in their house. <laughs> got 115 pumpkins. So, you know, they obviously like pumpkin. How many pumpkins have you got? 141. Oh, you, you're proper posh. You are. You've got some wild chicken meat that the hunters have been bringing in. So you can have fish or chicken. You've got a choice when you make it with your potatoes. Marvellous. And then what have you got? You've just got fish and potatoes. You don't even have the pumpkins. That's that's awful. But, you know, she is a single mother, so she might be struggling a little bit. Uh, let's see how Ty Lord's doing. How's Ty Lord doing for food? He has got... Oh, my God. He's got it fucking all going on. Oh, he's a hoarder. He's got fucking eggs. Where's he got eggs from? I mean, I know that the hunters are hunting wild chickens, but... Well, maybe they're picking up chicken eggs as well. He's got eggs. He's got potatoes. He's got pumpkins. He's got 32 pumpkins! There's only one of him! Why do you need 32 pumpkins? He's got loads of chicken meat and he's got fish. He's fucking treating himself, he is! And his, the bloody mother of his child over here is slumming it with just fish and potatoes. The mother of his child who he left! I mean, okay, we don't actually know what happened. Maybe she kicked him out, we don't know. Maybe she was having an affair with... I don't know. 
Dormando over here. It's entirely possible. It could all be her fault. But anyway, we know that she is raising a two-year-old on her own, slumming it with fish and potatoes, and Ty Lord over here in his fucking massive two-story house all to himself is just treating himself like a fucking king. That's what he's doing. <laughs> um, and what about this big family over here? See, they've only got pumpkins, fish and potatoes. They don't have any meat or any eggs. And there's like fucking 20 of them or something like that. Uh, and then you, how are you doing? You've got fish, chicken, potatoes and pumpkins, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> I'm sort of catching up to the idea that there's more to eat in the world than teddies. But, uh, Ty Lord, man. I don't think I like Ty Lord, you know. <laughs> I think, I think Ty Lord's a bit dodgy. We need to keep our eye on him. I think he might be the sort of black sheep of the village. <laughs> Ty Lord, the one they all whisper about. Oh, yeah, Ty Lord, a bit of a dick him, isn't he? <laughs> um... Right, so we're now, we're still in early winter. How are we doing? Food's going down a bit, but we're doing all right. And firewood's gone down a bit, but our woodcutter should be working. Who's our woodcutter these days? Eleanor is our woodcutter. Yes, I like Eleanor. She's one of my favorites. <coughs> um, keeping the wood coming in. Now a fisherman hard at work. And someone's brought his daughter to work. Who's that? That's Sabrina Lee. Sabrina Lee. Sabrina Lee. Sabrina Lee. It's quite a nice name, that. Sabrina Lee. Hmm, interesting. Um, she's not the healthiest child in the world. She's only got four hearts, not five. Hmm. Which house do you live in? Do you live in a house that has, like, proper food? Live in that house. Yeah, it's got a bit of proper food going on. I think it's because we don't have a herbalist. I think that's why the health is dropping. We also don't have, like, the best clothes in the world. So we've got hide coats, haven't we? But they're not warm coats. So later on, when we get wool from sheep, we can start using that to make warm coats, and that'll be better for them in the winter. But we don't even have a tailor at the minute. That'll be our next port of call. We'll have to build a tailor. Because while well, at the minute we've got plenty of um, stored jackets for people, they're going to use them throughout the course of the next year. So come next winter, we might not have any. So we'll have to get a tailor and a tanner to turn... Um, leather uh, to turn animal yes so a, ta a tanner turns animal skins into leather so the hunters should be bringing in animal skins yeah so they've, they're producing animal skins interestingly they've produced like loads of meat and only two animal skins although they are apparently just killing chickens they're not killing anything else <laughs> so any any clothes that we make are going to be made from chicken skin <laughs> um they're really just bringing in chickens they're not hunting anything else at all like there's deer and cows and sheep there's like sheep over there guys Want to hunt some sheep? You just want to hunt the chickens. But anyway, hopefully they'll cotton on at some point and they'll start hunting sheep. And then we'll get wool in. And then we'll be able to use the wool to make some warm coats rather than just hide coats. But yes, our um, if we get a tanner. I think that that was brought in with one of the mods. Um, actually, have I got that mod installed? Do I have a tanner? Yes, tannery. Um, uh, this building has no purpose if you've not selected a... Tree of life full or tree of life animal starting condition. Yes. So that must have brought in animal skins. Because I'm pretty sure in the base game when they killed animals it automatically became leather. And then with the tree of life mod they brought in the tannery so you have to convert the animal skin into leather. Which is quite sweet. Quite nice. So we'll get a tannery to convert the animal skin into leather and then a tailor to convert the leather into coats. That's what we'll have to do. That will be our next priority come next year. We also need to build the foresters, the herbalists, and the gatherers' hut. Um, so we'll get that going on. But we need to survive winter first. Once we survive winter, that'll be the end of the first part. And then we'll go into the second part with with, uh, with our plan. With our plan in mind. We need to build our little forest community out here. And we need a tailor. And possibly a blacksmith. Because we're doing all right for tools at the moment. So we probably won't need... If we build a blacksmith, we probably won't need a blacksmith actually creating tools because we're doing fine but it's always nice to have one just in case we you know suddenly run out of tools i mean it doesn't mean that they stop working if they run out of tools they still carry on working they just work much slower um that's fine i mean they still do actually have tools they're just sort of very low quality ones you can see some of these trees are starting to grow back and um, it's been so long since they cleared them <laughs> they've started since they started for the furthest away points some of them are growing back that's fine and just chop them down later. You child. Oh, that's Talonza. That's fucking Ty Lord and uh, what's their name? Daimona. Daimona. Yes, Ty Lord. Ty Lord and Daimona's child is out. What's he doing? He's idling. He's idling out in the snow. Marvelous. And his clothing is fair, which is nice. 
Uh, it's not ragged, because there's ragged fair and then something else like good or excellent or something, I don't know. It'd be very interesting to watch what Ty Lord becomes when he grows up. As the uh, the child of uh, the infamous Diamona and Ty Lord, gossip of the village. I like this about Banished when you start off at the beginning and it's nice and small and you know who all the villagers are and you can build like these little stories. When it's when you start expanding out later and it becomes a proper massive town and you've got like 300 people, you sort of don't have that anymore and it's kind of a shame. It just, it's really nice like at the beginning of the game when you can... Uh, you know, put little personalities to all the characters and stuff like that. There's Eleanor, hard at work. She always seems to be hard at work. She's one of my favourites. One of my favourite little workers. And who's this down here? That is Rainy. Rainy is still a fisherman, despite clearly having no idea how fishing works. Does she still just fall off the end of the pier? Because um, she's taught it to our other fellow fisherman. That's Brennett. Oh, Brennett is 12. He was the one who was a child who grew up. And yeah, he's he's been learning off Rainy, apparently. Because he also just falls off the end of the fucking dock. But that's fine. We won't uh, talk about that too much. Will somebody please pick up them fucking pumpkins? Okay, we're into late winter now. And we've still got over 100 firewood. So fucking Eleanor is doing a brilliant job keeping up with the demand for firewood. And we've still got 900 stored food. So our fishermen and our hunters are doing marvellously well. This is really going quite wonderfully. I mean, this is a very good position to be in. I've definitely been in worse positions in Banished. Um at the end of your first winter to be, you know, we've, we've handled winter so comfortably. I mean, even like our labourers have almost finished uh, clearing this whole area as well, which is nice. So we've got an area to expand into. We start building more houses and stuff. Although at the minute we don't need more houses. I mean, fucking Ty Lord's just got a fucking two-storey house all to himself. Um, you do need to build houses to, like, encourage growth, though. Because I don't think... Have we had any new children born recently? Don't think we have. We don't have any zero-year-olds, do we? No. Um, because, you know, you need a couple living in a house in order to, um, produce children. So even if you do have a situation like this where you've got, like, you know, one house only has one person in it, and one house only has two people in it because of, you know, marital problems. <laughs> I like how the houses are opposite each other as well, just like they're staring each other down. Um, um, yeah, you might just still want to build another house anyway because it'll encourage other people to like move in together and then have more children and stuff like that so it, it does encourage growth um even if you, it doesn't necessarily seem like you'll need a house but i might build a house out in the forest once we build our forest area um because that'll be nice and then you have like a little foresty community out here which will be lovely is that one of our hunters yes that's diamona who is one of our hunters what is ty lord still just a laborer ty lord yeah he's still just a laborer he's a fucking he's a loser is ty lord he's never going to make anything of his life I mean, you know, he's what, 20, 20, 24 years old and he's already got a kid that he never sees, an ex-wife living across the way, and you know, she's making a fucking success of herself as a hunter, doing very important work, and what the fuck are you doing? You're carrying fucking stones around, that's what you're doing. You're a fucking dog's body. <laughs> Just chopping down trees for a living. Honestly, Ty Lord, you're an absolute loser, you are. <laughs> Um, what's he doing actually at this precise moment? What's Ty Lord doing? Ty Lord is working, yes. I'm sorry, Ty Lord. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to uh, insult you like that. The labourers are very important people. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have this whole cleared area. And they're the ones bringing in all of our resources at the moment. Um, and yes, now that they've almost cleared that area, I actually want to tell them to start clearing um, the what button am I, am I looking for? I can't remember which one's which. That one. Yes. <clears throat> so I want to tell them to gather the stone and the iron from this foresty area so that then we have more room when we build the foresters. Um, yeah, go out to about there. About there. Maybe cut that bit off. Maybe not bother with that bit down there. I can't remember how far out the forests will extend. Extends out to... Oh, yeah, we do need to cover that bit down there as well. So collect all the stone and iron from that bit as well. So they will only collect the stone and the iron. They won't chop down the trees or anything like that. But it'll give us more room to plant more trees so we can have a thicker forest. Which will be lovely uh, if we get them on that after they've finished doing this little bit. And then we can start expanding out in this kind of a direction. And there's some poor deer. We've just taken all of their trees. I'm so sorry, deer. Sorry, we've destroyed your habitat. But, you know, you could head over there to where our hunters are and get killed by them for meat. That would be nice. Have they actually killed anything other than uh, 
um, chickens yet. Uh, oh yes, they've killed some. They've killed some sheep because we've got wild sheep meat. M mutton, I think. I think is what you meant was mutton, or lamb. Just wild sheep meat, and they've got some wool as well from killing the sheep. So we'll be able to use that wool to make warm coats at some point in the near future. Uh, the snow is clearing a little bit. We are officially into early spring. We have survived winter. And look at that. We've come out of winter with 193 firewood and 962 stored food. That is incredible. Like, that is really well done, us, that is. We did very, very well there. Okay, so next time, what we're going to do is we're going to get started on our little forest community. And we're going to build a tailor's and possibly a blacksmith's. Um, and we're going to make some nice warm coats for next winter. So you're always planning for next winter. That's what you're always doing in Banished. Planning for next winter. And we'll build our forest community and we'll get a we'll get a herbalist so we've got medicine coming in. And we'll get a gatherer's hut so we've just got even more food coming in. Even more variety of food. And, you know, even more amounts of food. So we're keeping on top of the food situation. And we might build a couple of more houses to try and encourage some more children being born. Um... But that will be next Sunday. So for now, I am going to just leave you with this beautiful, beautiful view of our beautiful, beautiful village. Which at the minute is very small, but will one day be gymongous and will cover the entire map. I was, I was, I was going to do an evil laugh there, but I completely chickened out. 